Hi everybody, welcome back to my kitchen. It might be a little bit rushed today. I'm running late on dinner. I'm going to make some cheesy scalloped potatoes and a recipe I only know as viral chicken. But I tried it once and I thought it was good, so I'm going to make it again tonight. I have three reviews to do tonight. One is this Valcusina Valboard cutting board. It claims to be a natural wood product, but it, it sure looks and feels like plastic to me. It has these rubber feet in the corners, which they say makes it non-slip. It withstands temperatures up to 350 degrees. It's dishwasher safe, and they say it's knife friendly. So that all sounds pretty good. We'll give it a try. Oh, and it's got these pastry measures too. Next, we have these Numjot cutting gloves. They are, you wear them while you're using the knife and supposedly they help protect your fingers from injury. I don't know if I'll enjoy using this or not. I've never had one before, but it sounds like a good idea. The last item I have tonight is this Red Chef 11 and a half inch skillet. It claims to be titanium and ceramic. It's induction friendly and it withstands temperatures up to 842 degrees in the oven. It also claims to be dishwasher safe and easy to clean. Although normally when you've got a nonstick pan, well, you wouldn't put it in the dishwasher, but normally it's, if it's any good at all, it just wipes out easy. So I don't know, but I feel like I want to put it in the dishwasher because they say that you can and you know, who likes washing dishes? To save time, I already peeled the potatoes. I didn't think you'd be interested in that part. If you care, I use the OXO potato peeler. I think it's the best I've ever tried. It's nice and comfortable. And now I have to peel the potatoes. I'm going to use this Best Teresa knife that I enjoyed from a previous review. And I'm going to use these cutting gloves. Well, probably just one though. And one thing I found interesting in the instructions, it says, do not deliberately cut, 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 stab, etc." to ensure the normal use of the product. So <laughs> I guess I'll just have to be careful like normal. I know these cutting gloves come in several sizes. This is size large. It seems like a perfect fit to me. Fits uh, like a glove. So I will go ahead and slice these potatoes. I need to slice them thin, they're scalloped potatoes. Normally I might use a food processor just to make sure they're all cut evenly, but that would kind of defeat the purpose of using the cutting board. So I'm going to, and I'm also, I am using the cutting board with the printed side up just to see if I can mar the surface. This is the best Teresa eight inch chef's knife that I reviewed earlier. And that's the dog barking in the background. Enjoy. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Kind of a sharp noise. Hopefully it doesn't bother your ears too much. Now, when I'm picking up food, this glove doesn't seem to be interfering with my normal movement. I am cutting without fear although still trying not to intentionally cut <laughs> the glove. Um, do I feel like it's a less precise cut because the gloves are in the way? Um, I don't think so because it's not like you want to cut. I don't want to cut close to my fingers. Maybe you do, but I don't feel comfortable with that. So. Does this give me more confidence? Yeah, I'd say so. These are Yukon Gold potatoes. Didn't specify what kind of potatoes to use in the recipe, but uh, Yukon Gold is what we had, so that's what I'm going with. Some of these slices are a little thicker than advisable, but uh, that's what gives the cooking character, right? My wife is getting home late this evening, so this might be baking longer than normal anyway. 
Potatoes are done. Next, I'm going to cut up this onion. Maybe a little trickier than potatoes. We'll see. Yeah, when I was doing this move here, I I got to admit that the glove does give me more confidence or less fear, one, one or the other, or both. I only need a quarter cup of onion, and this is a small onion, so whatever this happens to be is what I'm going to use. My daughter doesn't like onion, so I'm going to cut this up really small. The onion is thinly cut. I did an excellent job. I'm going to break this down a little more with the Vesterisa and then I'm going to switch to the Ulu knife for the fine mints. Although I got to admit the Vesterisa is doing a good job at mincing already, but um, I kind of just want to torture test the cutting board here. So. All right. That looks good. I could stop now, but like, I really want to use the ulu. <laughs> and I think I'm going to have way too much onion here. So I think tomorrow night we'll have brats with uh, minced onion on top. All right, here comes the ulu torture test. If you don't have an Ulu knife, I highly recommend it. They are so much fun. <laughs> Maybe I have low standards. I enjoy it. Easily amused. Got a fine mince out of the onion. I'm going to use the bench scraper to put it in this bowl. Onion is done. All right, we're ready to start making the sauce for the cheesy scallop potatoes. I'm just going to throw some butter in the pan I'm using the Chef Zilla induction cooktop and the Red Chef 11 and a half inch skillet. I'm ready to make the sauce for the cheesy scallop potatoes. I have the Red Chef 11 and a half inch skillet on top of the Chef Zilla induction cooktop. I've got the heat set to medium. I didn't really know what setting to put it on, but I figure start with medium. I've got the butter melting in the pan and I'm going to just kind of spread this around. And then it seems to be melting fairly quickly. Uh, while this is going, I'm going to add the onion. That's a quarter cup of onion. It says cook until tender, but not brown. Shouldn't take too long. These are really finely minced. Maybe I should have waited for the butter to finish melting, but I didn't want the butter to turn brown either. So so we'll do it this way. It's, it's never an exact science, right? Well, maybe it is, and I just don't know any better. Not a professional cook. From what I can tell, there's nothing sticking to this pan yet. The butter is completely melted now. I suppose I should just taste one of these onions to see if they're getting tender. Not yet. I'm just noticing how the food is cooking on the Red Chef. It looks like the middle of the pan is slightly convex. So the butter is pooling around the outside edges. 
Not it's not completely like barren in the middle, but there is a noticeable difference. Since I don't know what I'm doing, I want to stop just before it's ready so I can look ahead in the instructions and figure out what the next step is. Yeah, I've read the instructions, but I'm always I'm never sure. Okay, next I'm going to stir in a quarter cup of flour. It doesn't say to use a sift, but uh, I always think that's the best practice. I just don't want any lumps in my potatoes, other than the potatoes, I guess. Don't want any lumps of flour. Making a nice roux. Just going to stir this a little bit. And this is looking very nice. What's next? Stirring the flour. One and a half teaspoons of salt, which is half a tablespoon. Seems like a lot. Okay, how much next? Uh, eighth of a teaspoon of pepper. I'm not going to measure that. Looks good. And add milk. Doesn't say to add it slowly, but it just seems like a good idea to me. It says cook and stir until thickened and bubbly. Make it evenly distributed with the roux. I don't want any lumps. I just realized I was supposed to reduce the amount of salt if I'm adding cheese. Oh well. I'm sure it'll be fine. I hope. Yeah, it's it's a half of a teaspoon in difference. Yeah. I guess that's kind of a lot, but it's not an exact science. It will just save us from adding salt later. Well, it's starting to bubble. That's a good sign. Yeah, the middle is definitely hotter, but um, I don't know. It, it, it could be by design. I don't know. I'm just noting it for your information. It says uh, cook for one to two minutes more after it starts bubbling. I should be adding the cheese now. Basically stir until melted. Which looks like it won't take too long. It says to use shredded American cheese. I don't have that. I'm using shredded Mexican style cheese. <laughs> Whatever. I don't is it seasoned? Yeah, it's not seasoned. It's just uh Monterey Jack, cheddar, asadero, and queso. All right, this is done. I'm going to turn this off. I have a two and a half quart casserole dish here. I am going to, I already greased it. I'm going to put in half the potatoes, uh, dump half the sauce on, put more potatoes, and dump the rest of the sauce on, I think. I think that's what it says. Right. Place half of the sliced potatoes in a greased two-quart casserole. Cover with half the sauce. Repeat layers. Bake covered. All right. 
And I'm actually, I'm, I am layering these. I'm not just throwing them in here. Um, that's because it says layer. So I'm just, I don't, maybe, maybe they didn't mean to be literal. But I'm a literal kind of guy. Normally my wife makes the cheesy scallop potatoes. I don't know what recipe she uses. I'm sure it's not this one. But um, this is from, what recipe is? Uh, it's from my old Better Homes and Gardens. Old Reliable. It's what my mom always used. So as soon as I had my own place, I had to get my own copy. And honestly, I use internet recipes more than cookbooks these days. But as there's something about a cookbook. I think that's about half. So I'll pour some of the sauce on. I'll spread this out a little bit. Oh, I should have put bacon bits in here. That would have been good, but didn't think of it. Just adding the second layer of potatoes now. My wife has to work late tonight. I mean, she didn't plan on working late, but that's just how it goes sometimes. And so I'm sure she'll be hungry when she gets home. But hopefully she won't be home too soon because this won't be ready for a while. Yeah, probably uh, an hour and almost about an hour and a half from eating at this point. It's looking good. I'm going to pour the rest of the sauce on top. And I'll spread out the sauce evenly over the potatoes. Doesn't say to do this, but it just seems obvious. So go with your gut. This looks good. And now it says bake covered in a 350 degree oven for 45 minutes, stirring once. Set the timer for 25 minutes, stir, and then another 20. Then I'm going to take the cover off and bake it for another 30. So um, I'm going to cut away and or maybe I'll start working on the chicken. I need to clean some of this up. I'll be right back. The potatoes are cooking. So now I'm going to do some prep for the chicken, starting with the garlic. First, I'm going to use my Gallardo garlic peeler. I need four to five cloves of garlic. So of course, that uh, translates to five cloves of garlic or more. I don't know if this is the easiest or best way to peel garlic, but I enjoy it. When it works. <laughs> this one's a little stubborn. Oh, that sounds better. There we go. You could use pre peeled garlic or pre minced garlic, but I just like it feels more authentic when you do it yourself. I was watching a kitchen nightmares video today and Gordon Ramsay said something I thought was interesting. He's, one of the chefs was using cookbooks for his recipes and Gordon said, these are for home use. They are far too complicated for a restaurant. And I just always assumed that restaurant food was more complicated than home food. But no, Gordon said that the recipes in cookbooks are designed for people in their kitchens to slave over. If it was too easy, maybe 
feel like you didn't accomplish anything? I don't know. It just, it feels like that nothing is ever fast and easy in the kitchen, you know? At least not for me. It's always, for me, it always takes double the time that they say. Of course, filming slows me down, but even if I don't film, sometimes my wife and I cook together. But uh, if she's serious about cooking, she normally doesn't want my help. <laughs> Garlic is peeled. I'm just going to get rid of these peelings and uh, rinse this out. The garlic needs to be minced. I'm going to first give it a fine chop with the Vesterisa chef's knife, and then I'll switch to the Ulu for the rocking action. Now, I'm actually looking forward to the cutting glove with the garlic because that's always close to the fingertip work, but we'll, we'll see how that how this works. I think I would have, that would have been the tip of my thumb <laughs> if I wasn't wearing the glove. Um, so I, I think I'm going faster than I normally would. Um, okay, I'm having trouble picking up the garlic with the glove. All right, definitely going faster. No fear. Yeah, I can't tell if I'm nicking the glove because the glove makes my hand bigger or if I'm being faster and less careful. I, I really can't tell, but I do feel better about cutting the garlic. I'm not, because I always have that anxiety when I'm cutting. Respect the knife, you know. I don't know if you ever lose that. The garlic is pretty thinly chopped. I'm going to switch to the ulu and torture the cutting board for a little bit. All right, that's a pretty fine mince on the garlic. So I'm going to put that back in the bowl here and look at the next step. In the next part of the recipe, I have to score the chicken. And this, <laughs> this piece is much thicker than this one. So I was thinking I might butterfly this one. And I've never done butterflying before, but I think this glove will come in handy for that. So. Why not? Let's do that. All right. That worked well. Yeah, these are just about the same thickness now. And that's perfect. So now I'm going to score the tops of these. And I think we just add salt and pepper from, but uh, one thing at a time, let's score the top. I'm using a uh, diamond pattern for the scoring. And I think we're just doing this so that the seasoning gets into the crevices. Well, this best recent knife was great for butterflying. And, on, and also for the scoring, I guess. So I've got the diagonals cut one way and I'm just going to go back through and Cut the other way. I don't want to cut all the way through, so I don't want the chicken to fall apart. Just making crevices here. Next, I'm just going to season both sides with salt and pepper.
it says to dip the chicken in the flour, but I think I'm just going to use my sifter again and see where that takes me. Just going to knock a little flour onto the chicken, turn it over and do it again. Oh, time to stir the potatoes. I can't tell if it's doing what it's supposed to do, but it's easy to stir. So I guess so. After I stirred the potatoes, I put them back in the oven covered. I'm going to cook for another 20 minutes. Then I'm going to take the cover off and cook for another 30. And it's too early for me to start cooking this chicken. So I am going to put it back in the refrigerator and resume the recording later. We'll be right back. I just rinsed the cutting board off. I, I didn't wash or anything. I just rinsed it and I don't see any scratch marks from any of my knives. <laughs> so I think that works pretty well. I'm actually going to put it in the dishwasher for my final test, but uh, you won't get to see that. The cheesy scalloped potatoes will be ready in about 16 minutes, give or take. I'm going to start the chicken cooking. It's already been sliced and floured and seasoned and all that. So I'm actually just going to start the cooking process now. The next step is to melt butter and olive oil. Ooh, I think it, I think the heat's too high. I'm going to turn it down. Actually, I should have added the olive oil first, keep the butter from browning, but it's fine. nearly melted. Nice and bubbly. All right, next I'm going to sear the chicken. I'm going to turn the heat up back to 800. I didn't hear a lot of searing going on there. In the recipe, it never says to flip the chicken, which I would ordinarily do, but it does say to spoon the sauce over it, and maybe that will finish cooking it through. I know I've made this before, but it's been a while. I just don't remember. There's a definite hot spot either in the pan or in the induction cooktop. So I just rearrange the pieces to make sure that they're all getting a even heat. The chicken is browning nicely, but I want it to be just a little bit more done before I go to the next step. Next, I'm going to add a third cup honey. Then I will add the rest of the butter. 
It's a tablespoon. Now that that is melted, I'm going to add the soy sauce. It's a tablespoon. And a tablespoon and a half of apple cider vinegar. Now I just reduce the liquid. Just stirring it up while I'm reducing. And it says to spoon the sauce onto the chicken during the reduction. The sauce is thickening a bit. And the chicken is definitely cooking. It's still not where I want it to be. Sounds like the potatoes are done. They could use a little more browning. I might, might turn the heat up a bit. Sauce is significantly reduced. I'm just going to take the temperature of the chicken and see where we're at. Chicken is done. I'm assuming the sauce will thicken more as it cools. So I am going to plate this up. Well, I just tried the potatoes and I don't think they're done yet. So we're going to have a potato dessert, but this is what the chicken looks like. Looks pretty good. So I'm going to uh, stop recording and I would say the Red Chef nonstick frying pan is a success. It cleans up very easily. I didn't really have any problems, although I, I did notice that it wasn't heating evenly, but I don't know if that's a, a product of the, of the induction cooktop or the pan itself. I might have to try this on the regular stove. Uh, the cutting board was a huge success. I'm still going to put it through the dishwasher, see what happens there. And I actually enjoyed the cutting gloves. So. Uh, I would say this was a, a good a good round of tests. Thanks for stopping by.